And so you do that, whatever, 10, 20, 30 episodes, very quickly, you become very knowledgeable on the subject because you're talking to people that are super knowledgeable often. You're way, way more knowledgeable on the subject. You're way more knowledgeable on your buyer. You have 30 additional potential relationships with people that could be your customer. You have a bunch of posts that are going out on LinkedIn. You have a body of work of 30 podcasts. Um, and you're off, you're off to, you're off to the races. I am a senior marketing manager at a um, large SaaS company, and we have a brand new team that was onboarded. Um, and I actually think our CMO is a big fan of yours. Um, nice. A lot of the strategy, I think, of our team is really to implement a lot of this stuff that we're talking about. Um, so to kind of break it down, not to get too in the weeds, because I want this question to be relevant for everybody else, but we are owning different industries as team members. So we're owning different industries as a start of just kind of digging into some um, strategy. And mine is in the tech and SaaS industry. And I would really like to start using my personal LinkedIn to reach out to people and start to kind of deeply know that customer. Um, but my personal LinkedIn right now is really just used for job searching, um, following Refine Labs, <laughs> to be honest, and um, learning on my own, but I don't really post that often. So I'm curious how you would recommend I start maybe posting on my personal um, platform to eventually get to a point where I'm engaging people in my specific target audience and creating value for them um, and also just getting to know them. Mm -hmm. At one point, everyone was at a point where they weren't posting on LinkedIn, right? A lot of people were there. Like it wasn't too long ago where all I did was use LinkedIn for job searching, right? So it's cool. Um, who's your buyer? Our buyer is uh, HR professionals. So in the tech space. And so what you want to do is you want to post in order to engage with them. Um, yes. So here's what I would do if I were you. Um, because I'm sure that we're relatively similar in this is that like, while I 100% respect and value the function of HR, I don't know a ton about it to a level where a chief people officer or someone would think that I'm super credible, right? And so what I would do instead is that I would create a show where I interview all of those people that know really what they're talking about. So I'd be looking for, I don't know, I'm just throwing some stuff, chief people officer at Google or, you know, director of HR at this, you know, SaaS company, depending on whether you're SMB, middle market enterprise, you can start to carve out and pick those. And then I would have them come on and I would interview them. I did this, this is the exact strategy that I did when I was going into medic, um, into ICU physicians and intensivists. I created a show and I interviewed experts. And so I would interview them quickly what you find is that as you start to get the the knowledge transfer from these people over to you, for lack of a better way to say it, like very quickly, you become very knowledgeable on the subject because you're talking to people that are super knowledgeable often. So you get a knowledge transfer, which over time allows you to guide the conversations and then add your point of view over time. But initially you get content to put on your own LinkedIn, which is mainly highlighting other people and sharing those thoughts, but it's also going to teach you from a personal standpoint, the mechanics of running a content strategy, which was exactly what it taught me in 2017. And so you do that, whatever, 10, 20, 30 episodes, you're way, way more knowledgeable on the subject. You're way more knowledgeable on your buyer. You have 30 additional potential relationships with people that could be your customer. You have a bunch of posts that are going out on LinkedIn. You have a body of work of 30 podcasts. Um, and you're off. You're off to. You're off to the races. That's how I would do it. A quick follow up to that too. Of course, um, we can do multiple so follow ups. Realistically, I'm I'm about like the next step, right? And and interviewing the CFO of Google or something would be incredible. But I wouldn't want that for my first one in the first place because it's. I bet your first podcast was not nearly to the quality that it is now. So how would you? ease into that and just take that first step. Um, and I guess a, a second part two of that would be how important is audio quality and some of those other things um, to 
starting a video series. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's ironic, right? Like we're, we're on a zoom here, which is pretty low quality. Like two people ago, I answered a question where it was cutting out the whole time, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> uh, audio, audio quality is really not that important. The quality of the information is most important. You can figure out the quality later. Just get, st get started. If the, like, if the chief people officer or whoever of Google wants to come on your podcast, they're not going to care if it's on a zoom or you're using some platform. I, I real I do believe that, right? And I've interviewed very sophisticated people from Zoom that you have access to that you could do on your own with like AirPods or a mic or a you know low end microphone. And so, like, do not don't get caught up in these types of details when you do it. Like, the next step is to say, I need to go find my first guest. Who is that going to be? And then I'm going to message ten people and I'm going to get my first guest. And you figure it out as you go, right? You figure out, okay. The mic that I have is not at it. Like it was me and AirPods. The AirPods that I have are not adequate. I need to get a microphone. And then I get one. And then I'm on. And then we like, we've been evaluating other platforms from Zoom for Zoom. But the fact of the matter is that being able to be live with everyone on the video is super important. And most virtual event platforms don't allow that to happen. And so I would rather stay on Zoom where everyone can be on video and it feels more like a community than you watching me and not engaging with all the, the peers and people that are here. So. Yeah, I'm sh if you have another follow-up, we'll just keep rolling, right? So the, ne the next step is is commit to it, go and find, make a list of the types of people and then go and try and find a guest. And then would you clip those into many, like the best little nuggets from it and put it on your personal LinkedIn or would you just post the whole thing? <laughs> I would definitely clip it um, and I would make it a message and then I would tag the people that I'm interviewing so that they see it and I would share those those assets with them because you already did them and it sh highlights their work so I would share it with them too. I did this exact this exact strategy and I had two, three, four of the most influential people in the in the med the medical niche is that I was targeting, the most influential people in the country or the world that I had built relationships with because I had them on our podcast and no one else was inviting them onto a podcast in 2017. They probably still aren't. And so I could have them on the podcast and then I could would see them at the conference and then I would be able to talk, you know what I mean? You just go from there and all of a sudden you got like a couple of key people that love your product, that have a great relationship with you, that feel good about your company, that are po that have influence, like a lot of people ask them where to buy stuff or what stuff to buy in this category and they like you more. So there's a ton of secondary benefits to doing this even outside of the content creation. Just the, uh, the pure awareness of influential people I think is huge. I've noticed that some people do it to me now. I think it's really smart. Some type of vendors have me on their podcast. I've never heard of their product before, but then I go on their podcast and I talk and the like just the touch point of me knowing the brand name and knowing what it does is worth it to them. With those interviews too, would you have a theme in mind or an outline of a lot of questions, or would you try to maybe have a couple pointers that you wanted to touch on and just let the conversation go where it may? You're probably gonna need more of an outline initially. That's what I needed to. So you're gonna kind of need to have it structured based on whatever you want to accomplish. And so it's like, you're probably gonna want something like that early on. And then over time, as you understand the subject matter more deeply, as you understand the topics, you understand the people, you can start to loosen up on those um, those guidance, but I go in, if I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one guest podcast interview, I know exactly what that person's expertise is. I know exactly how I'm going to slot, slot that into the story that I'm trying to tell to all of the listeners so that I can add, use this person's expertise to add value to all of the listeners in a way that, that aligns with my perspective.